You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Did a woman edit the Quran? A new study suggests that Hafsa, one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, played an important role in editing and codifying the Quran. She was also one of the first to have kept a written version of the Quran. Is this true? And if so, what are its implications for our understanding of women in early Islam? Dr. Shabir Ali joins me to examine the article by Ruqayya Khan about Hafsa's significant but perhaps forgotten contribution to the Quran's formation as text. Now, Dr. Shabir Ali, you've had a chance to look at the article. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Ruqayya Khan's um, understanding of Hafsa as being forgotten? Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we're dealing here with the writing of a scholar. Rukhaya Khan is uh, well placed as uh, a chair of uh, Islamic studies. Um, Claremont uh, Graduate University. Yeah, so uh, we, we have to take her work seriously as coming from an academic of good standing. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, uh, looking through the, the what she has written, uh, it seems obvious to me that she's approaching this uh, from a feminist perspective perspective which wants to bring out any neglected piece of uh, evidence that shows that women had some importance mm -hmm. and uh, she has done a good job of highlighting the importance Hafsa has had in the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and in the early Muslim community. Uh, it seems to me however that she has built more of a case uh, than is necessary on, on the, the uh, fragments of information that is available ab about Hafsa and uh, the codex of the Quran uh, uh, to which she was privy. So do you think she's exaggerating Hafsa's role there? Well, well, let me explain in detail and then perhaps that conclusion will, uh, uh, will be evident in itself. Um, uh, the the uh, earliest um, uh, reports we have from the traditional Muslim uh, writings about uh, the way in which the Quran was collected uh, shows that when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died, the Quran was not collected together in a uh, codex. Uh, the, it was there available in the memories of Muslims and also on written scraps uh, of uh, a variety of materials on shoulder blades of animals, on barks of trees, on pieces of leather uh, and, and so on. And, and these uh, sc uh, scraps of, of material uh, were kept in the position, possession of various Muslim individuals. Now, after the Prophet, peace be upon him, died, Abu Bakr was caliph for two years. And within those two years, uh, according to this traditional account, he had Zaid bin Thabit, one of the close companions of the Prophet, go around and collect all of these scraps of material and, and rewrite the Quran from the copying them onto sheets, which were then kept with Abu Bakr. And then upon his death, given naturally over to Omar, the, the next, next caliph. Mm -hmm. And then when that caliph died, uh, he left it with his daughter. Now this, was the, uh, this daughter, Hafsa, was one of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, Rukhaya Khan uh, stresses the fact that this was a literate person and she was intelligent and so on. Okay, so she kept that copy according to this traditional Muslim uh, account. So why did Omar leave it with uh, Hafsa? Uh, this is a question. Why, okay. why did he, if this was uh, an official and state copy of the Quran, the most important document of the uh, Islamic community, why was it then not transmitted to the next the caliph? Next caliph mm -hmm. Well, the next caliph was Uthman, and we'll come back to this question, but the next caliph was, was Uthman. Now, Uthman, uh, in his time, uh, made copies of the Quran and had it circulated to uh, various uh, major Muslim centers of learning, all of the big cities. Uh, the number of copies, uh, according to the reports, vary from anywhere from four to seven copies. But then what was the basis basis of the copy, the copies that he was making. According to the traditional account, he uh, requested Hafsa to loan him her copy. Uh, and, and that became the basis of making the copies to send out. Well, uh, it, it is said in the same report that Hafsa uh, made a condition that you must return it to me. Mm -hmm. And it is only on that condition that she loaned her copy uh, to uh, Othman. Now, the, the reports are such that uh, one gets the impression that there is some duplication of the efforts because while uh, Othman is going to obviously make copies of Hafsa's text, Zaid, the young man we heard about previously who went around and collected the scraps of information and then copied them onto those sheets, mm -hmm. he seems to be doing the same thing again. 
that happen? Well, well, we don't know. It could be for, f for further verification. It could be because now he has with him a committee of persons uh, so that whereas he was writing according to one dialect, maybe these other persons are from the Quraysh uh, people and, and they know the Arabic according to the Quraysh dialect and they could uh, verify what was the original source uh, scrap from which Zaid has copied and, and they could see what, what is the correct way of copying so that everything is represented according to the Quraysh dialect. That, that, that could be a very good and important uh, reason for doing the work all over again. But uh, historians generally looking at these reports uh, and looking at this duplication think that uh, the, the copy of the Quran was first made actually in the time of the third caliph, Uthman. And not in Abu Bakr's time. And not in Abu Bakr's time. And they think that, uh, well, these reports that show it was, it was done in the time of Abu Bakr are, are just uh, invented reports uh, by Muslims who wanted to show that the Quran was earlier than Uthman. It was collected earlier, not, not w left until Uthman uh, does it, for various reasons. So in now this case, then, uh, Hafsa's role would be diminished in this understanding that you're proposing? Yes, uh, and, and that is not because she's a woman. Uh, and, and this is where uh, Rokhaya uh, Khan uh, seems to have taken a, like a, a different look at it, uh, w for good reasons, uh, but uh, has built more of a case on it than the historians would allow for, because uh, Rakaya is painting the picture that uh, it, it, the historians have neglected this because it was a woman who had this copy. Uh, but when historians look at it, they're not looking at it from the perspective of whether the copy was in possession of a man or a woman. Uh, they are thinking that if, if Abu Bakr's copy was an official copy, uh, kept with the caliph and then passed on to the next caliph, then why wasn't that same copy passed on to the subsequent caliph? Why was it then given to the caliph's daughter, important a person though she was, uh, e even as the fact that she was the wife of the prophet, peace be upon him, she was a very important individual, but at the same time, I if this uh, Quran text was the official copy, why was it not given to the next caliph? This is how historians look at it, whether rightly or wrongly, mm -hmm. uh, but, but they, uh, they should not be accused of neglecting this piece of information because it happened to uh, involve a woman, uh, as if the historians did not want to give prominence to, to uh, a woman. Okay, so tell me about Hafsa then. Who is she and, and, and what do we, what is agreed about her. Well, she is an important person in her own right, and, and, and the fact that, that the stories show that the text was with her shows that she is an important person. Well, she was married to the Prophet, peace be upon him, after her husband had died, and uh, th she was still quite young at the time when she got married to the Prophet, peace be upon him. She's known to be an intelligent, a literate person, and there is uh, a, a, a report that shows that her father, Omar, uh, on one occasion uh, gave uh, Hafsa a, a piece of, uh, of leather uh, during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and asked her to write down on this uh, the, the, a chapter of the Quran, the beginning of the 90th chapter, al Bayyina. Uh, so he said, when the Prophet recites, you write it down for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, th and that shows, and, and Rukhaya Khan is uh, clear here, uh, that uh, people had to learn uh, the Quran from the wives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Omar, though being a very important individual in his own right, and a man, had to learn the Quran from his daughter, Hafsa, because mm -hmm. Hafsa was close to the Prophet, peace be upon him, being his wife. So women did have a very important role in early Islam, in that they were uh, some of the first teachers, and the fact that Hafsa would be a conduit through which her father could learn the Quran uh, shows uh, her great importance. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time, Brother Shabira. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we will answer questions we've received from you, our viewers.